Hey everybody, Wendy Klinky with Blue Cat Studio. So today is day one of our Advent Challenge and I'm super excited. So yesterday I talked a little bit and in case you, you missed it, we'll go over it again. But I had this crazy idea that what if we do a painting a day kind of in honor of Advent. So that means basically 25 paintings this month from December 1st. And today's December 1st, so it's day one through to December 25th. Um, it feels like a big challenge for me because I've got a full-time job, I go to school, all the things, single mom, but you know what, we're going to do it. So we're going to keep these to 20 minutes or less, but I figure the timer isn't really started yet because I'm yap, yap, yapping at you instead of actually doing the painting. So just a quick recap to get us started, I basically got a whole bunch of wooden ornaments, right? And then I said, okay, let's pick four or five. I ended up finding seven like ornament or not ornaments, um, wrapping papers that I really liked. And I decoupage them on each of these ornaments. So now we have this really fun, like mishmash of, of ornaments. And I just love it because my, my theme has always been, and I've had all these wrapping papers for years and it made me so happy to just pull all this together and have like the absolute perfect combo of turquoise, um, hot pink and red. All right. So I'm going to move all the rest of these out of the way. We're going to start with this guy. We're going to flip it over. So this will be the back side and I'm going to create a board and um, I'm going to document the whole process. That way we have some instructions at some point, but it hasn't been created yet. So, you know, and again, it's a crazy idea. All right. So we have this side and so we're going to flip it over and we're going to start painting on this side. So because I'm a little worried about getting paint on this side, I'm going to place it on this in hopes that we kind of, if we need to move it around, it just sort of stays on this. Um, we'll see how that goes. And then I've got a palette. So I'm going to begin with pink. So it is, pink is my favorite color. Obviously you've seen a whole ton of pink going on. Um, so I'm just going to grab a brush and you all, all right, we're going to pick a round brush here and we'll begin with just a base coat on the ornament that is pink. And I don't need to get, you know, that the neck of the ornament, we're just going to get the basic portion of it done here. And so today it's going to be just painted. Um, there may be other days where I incorporate some elements of collage. I'm not hundred percent sure. Again, this was one of those concepts that I came up with the other day and was like, Oh my gosh, I absolutely have to do this. I love this idea. And it was, you know, the last day of November. So we just went with it. So I got the wooden ornaments from Michael's and it was like 10 bucks before they're like 20 make 20 discount for 50 ornaments. Now I decoupaged the backs of well over 25 just because I wanted, I wasn't exactly sure how many of each combo I was going to need. And then I actually broke one too. Look, I broke the little loop off. So this one, look at that, isn't that great? Pink with red polka dots. It's like so mean. It's not even funny. So offloading my paint from my brush just to, so I'm not rinsing a crap ton of um, extra pigment into my rinse water. Oh, and I'm such a dork because I got tired of there being like a little Tostitos advertisement. I decoupage the lids of all of my water jugs. So they'd always look cool on camera for you guys because, you know, dorks are us. Okay, getting a little bit of white. So I'm just going to do like a Christmas tree or kind of a snowy Christmas scene here. And I'm going to strike while the paint is wet. And again, the, the, goal, the goal here is to keep it short, keep it simple. So we'll do kind of like a white base here and notice it the white is blending in and it's creating kind of a light pink and I'm good with that so then I'm going to kind of create like a big Christmas tree kind of form right here and I'm just allowing the paint to really blend right there on my surface and it looks rough and it looks kind of funky but that's okay don't stress we're going to add some more detail in a second oh, no don't, don't make a mess Wendy nice tallish but skinny one there or maybe kind of how it kind of, it kind of sneaking okay I'm trying not to block the way now I did not fully plan these either I think part of the fun of this is being able to be a little bit spur of the moment hey Carrie how you doing all right and so again we're going to be doing 25 paintings all right I'm going to just kind of stick that there I don't want this to move around because again I decoupage the backs first and then was like, oh, but then if I paint them, I might get paint on the back. And so one of the, the ideas that, you know, I've been toying with and one of my members was like, hey, you should totally do this. And I was like, yeah, you know what? You're right. Is that on the flip side of each of these ornaments, we could actually write the number of the day. 
um, and then you could do the countdown. So I haven't decided if I'm going to do that or put the number on the board. Let me just try this really quick. And the reason I'm debating is because sometimes, you know, kind of one of the fun surprises of Advent calendars, at least for me, is not knowing what's on the other side. Um, and, you know, I had an Advent calendar I grew up with as a child that my parents built. And, like, it's like this little, like, five by five box. And it has like little like miniature scenes inside it. And I totally was like, I want to redo that for my kids, but they just don't seem to make miniatures that small anymore. And so it's kind of now like frozen in time and I can't change it up the way my mom did, which I really loved that. So I thought, okay, well maybe if we did this, then we could kind of change it up, put them in different order. So you never not, you're never really sure what you're going to get, except for of course on the 25th, which is, you know, going to be the baby Jesus in the manger because it's Christmas. All right, so now I'm going to come back in with a little bit more white and just start to kind of create kind of that snow drifty look. And notice I'm creating kind of like a, um, I'm going in an arc. So it's not straight lines. And I'm also not doing completely solid. I'm kind of, I'm kind of just arcing across, kind of creating an arced, like snow drift of a, um, of a horizon line. It's my kind of horizon line. It's not straight on purpose, which means I can't mess it up. I got time lapse going here too. Oh, of course, I'm painting off camera because, you know, that's, that's how we roll. Let me fix that. Okay. All right, now I'm going to grab a fluffy brush or something a little bit. Oh, well, that brush just fell apart on me. Let's try another one. Okay, here we go. So now I'm going with like a square brush. Actually, it shows up better not on my hand or a flat brush. And I'm going to kind of fluff it a little bit. And if I fluff it, it, it spreads out and then I'm going to dab it directly into that paint straight up and down kind of pouncing it so that the tip of it is white, but I don't really have white creeping up and then maybe even offload some of it on my palette and then we'll kind of come in and we'll add some. Now again, I'm going to go kind of in, a, in an arcing motion back and forth, back and forth, dabbing straight up and down. You see that kind of creating a, a snowy look. There we go. So the idea is that we've kind of got a, uh, a light pink on a dark pink background. I don't intend to make this monochromatic. I'm hoping to bring in a few other, a few other colors as well. I think my snow is actually getting a little bit saturated here like it's a little bit too much a little bit too much white for me but we'll add a little bit maybe a little less in this in these other trees but just a little kiss of snow or maybe have it kind of focused on one side so it's not so much brush strokes but brush dabs and then maybe a little bit on this guy here mostly focused at the tops maybe the edges a little. So now I'm kind of angling the brush out, kind of creating a V shape with a little bit of the arching back and forth. So my worry here is that my trees are going to be completely like all the same and like creating a pattern and boring, but all right, we'll, we'll figure this out. Nope. Oh, there's my son. I just got home from Boy Scouts. Hi there. I'm filming, I'm on air right now. So, um, okay. All right, so getting this in here and we're just gonna kind of come back. And so you can see we've kind of got some trees. Let me rotate this again. I just don't want to get paint on the backside, but you can see it kind of is giving this cool, like pinkish, pinkish look. Um, and again, cause I'm really feeling the pink this year. Hi Mike. If you can just have a seat on the couch or chill for a second, if you, if you want, I'll be, I'll be done shortly. All right. So I think we're drying up here. I can kind of touch it. And so I'm adding a little bit more emphasis on, but very, very gently kind of emphasis on the, uh, on kind of the outsides of the trees. The kid's dad just came in for a minute because they've been, my son's been a boy scouts. All right, here we go. A little bit here, a little bit here. There you go. Life happens, right? 
So again, I'm just trying to make, give it a little bit of a fluffy look, but I really also want to make sure that those pink underpinnings kind of show. So now that we've got those basic, well, black or white, 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 not black, white and pink, I want to mix it up a little bit. So I'm going to rinse this flat brush. I think I rinsed my other rounder brush. I'm going to go with a smaller guy. So you could go with any kind of like a small round brush. Um, or if you happen to have a really skinny flat brush like this, you see how tiny, let me bring this up. Can you see how tiny that is? You know, here's my hand. I love this because it allows me to kind of get that fluffy look. Um, yeah, the fluffy look without having to go, without having to use a detail brush. Okay. So I just grabbed some tangerine that, yeah. So tangerine from Craftsmart. It's a nice color. Um, and I want to get a little bit of a sunset look. So I'm going to actually use the tail of my brush over here, grab a little bit of that tangerine and mix it. I don't want it to be too screaming. It almost looks peachy, but that is still actually quite an orange. It kind of looks like a, like a creamsicle or one of those orange sickles or whatever it is, you know, there's the orange and the, the orange and the, the orange and the vanilla ice cream thing that you have in the summertime. Or, yeah. Okay. So again, we're going to do that similar kind of dabbing in here and still I'm feeling that's a little bit dark. So I'm going to bring some more white out here and just kind of brush the brush through. Okay. I'm going to scrub the bristles a little so it gets fluffy again. I'm going to come in and add, now well, let's see. She will add a couple of like little streaks of this yellow tangerine. -y. Yeah, we'll add some deeper tangerine in here. So kind of overlapping a couple of the snowdrift spots. It just kind of warms it up a little bit. Maybe you see if I can even sneak a little bit of true tangerine in there. Not a lot, but just a little. And so, you know, if we're talking color schemes, um, these are, you know, kind of analogous, I think. Well, pink and tangerine, they're pretty close. All right, so we've got a little bit of the, the tangerine in there. That might be more than I'd, I'd hoped for. But then I think we'll say if the sun is kind of coming in, we'll add a little bit of an orange glow. Oops, don't move. A little bit of an orange glow just to the right side of those trees. And so again, you're kind of coming, coming in across and creating some almost like arc shaped lines with your dabs there. You really want it to be kind of fluffy. In fact, I am liking this kind of, not the lightest of them, but the medium wash down that I did. And again, you know, if we decide that we don't like this, we can always just paint right over it and do it a little bit differently, but this is a fun kind of way to, to freehand it and not stress too much about being able to draw and get the design right. You just kind of just kind of doing some strategic brush stroking, really, for lack of a better term. Strategic brush stroking. Okay. I'm going to see about adding a little bit more of that pure tangerine. Just a couple of tangerine spots kind of in the middle. Go sparing. Just a little back and forth. That's pretty intense there. I'm trying to keep this, you know, kind of interesting, kind of painterly, but also fairly quick. So I think I must have gabbed for like three or four minutes. So I figure we're maybe at the 10 minute mark. So I'm, I'm doing okay. Again, we're trying to do this in 20 minutes of painting or less. And, you know, sometimes I tell myself that just so that it seems a little, a little less daunting. Cause sometimes if you feel like you've got to commit to a couple hours or all this time, then you know, you get so freaked out about it that you don't even start. So sometimes just telling yourself, all right, I'm just going to do this for this short amount of time is enough to kind of get you over that kind of creative hump and slump and, and move forward. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the, the pink. I never told you guys what it was, but I think it was I'm using the Sargent Art um, Magenta. It's a beautiful, beautiful pink. But you could also use the Artist's Loft um, Brilliant Magenta. I think you could get away with, oh, where was it? Pink Peony, I think, or Peony Pink from Deco Art, or even Dragon Fruit. All of these are perfectly acceptable things. All right. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the pink back in there because I don't want this to feel like an orange tree, right? We want that, we want that color in there. Pink is our dominant color. But, but orange just gives it a little bit more life. Just 
Did you want more of that rice, honey? It's in the rice cooker. Okay. All right, and so I'm adding a little bit of extra shadow and the deep tones kind of to the, oops, got a little line there that's not working to the base. And a little bit here. Again, the idea is that the light is coming from this side and we're getting some, some shadows. So I gotta rotate it here. in here just a little and so again if you're like hey that's a cool idea or you know Wendy you're close but you're not quite you know I will not be offended if you feel like you got to do it differently just trying to show some options and again we're having fun with this um, all right so we've kind of got we've kind of got the concept going here now I feel like we've got you know I want to get a little bit more depth down in this zone I want a little darker kind of under right under here right under here now it's feeling a little flat to me. Offloading the paint, giving it a quick rinse. So of course I gotta add some teal, right? Because teal makes everything more interesting. If you were on our live yesterday and saw us do the um, the triadic color scheme when we did the, the cherries, I'm using almost the exact same colors, really close. So a tiny bit of the teal. This is a mermaid tail teal, it's very, very intense. You can tell I love it because my poor bottle is super beat up. I'm just going to grab that same guy, but I'm going to take a whole bunch of white and then just a kiss of that to kind of lighten it up. And it's almost a greenish from the teal standpoint. All right, so mix it out and we've just created a light blue. You could also use like a, like a Bahama blue probably or a Laguna, um, but I love, I love being able to mix and kind of create my own, my own color scheme. So, We'll get a little bit of that blue kind of over here on the, the left side. A couple of kisses of paint kind of right across. Ba, 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 bum, bum. Yeah, that's kind of bringing this guy. And then a couple of the branches are going to zip across here, but you're keeping it light, really light, right? Oh, come on. You need a little bit more paint than that. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to try and get some, some tracers put together over the coming days. Again, sometimes when you get these crazy ideas, like at the 11th hour, you're like, all right, well, it's go time. So we're going to do the thing and then we're going to figure out how to get it out to everybody. Because sometimes timing is more important than getting it right. Sometimes it's better to just do the best you can with what you've got and be imperfect and wait and not do it at all, or wait and be, well, yeah, and not do it. That's, I missed the boat, I guess. Okay, so adding a few like swooshes of that kind of that um, lightened down mermaid tail. In fact, you can't even tell it's mermaid tail at this point. So we might have to add a touch or two and a little bit along the edge here, a little bit here. All right, now just for giggles. Okay, Wendy, I know I feel like I'm going out on a limb here with this deep teal. So grabbing just the tiniest kiss, I'm going to kind of brush a lot of it off. I don't want much, but just a smidge. A little bit in. A little bit in. Yeah, I like that. Just little kisses here and there. So I'm really trying to low, offload a lot of that paint so there's not too, too much. It's not goopy. It's almost dry brushing this entire project. It's a lot of dry brushing. Okay, because we've got this tree and overlapping this tree, I'm gonna have the shadows kind of on this edge and we're gonna be very careful about the highlight points. This also helps us kind of define our, our horizon line a little bit. Yeah. Again, I'm kind of holding this a little bit extra really don't want to get paint on the on the other side of it so if you are catching this before you've done your things you may want to wait and do all the cool you know wrapping paper mod podge on the back side afterwards but i was like totally on a roll last night until the 11th hour because i found all the cool like wrapping paper that i wanted to decoupage as the base thing all right so adding a little bit extra of that shadow kind of at the base here yeah maybe a little bit kind of a few drifts in this zone 
We don't want to cover up all the pink. We want kind of like a, a range of a range of tones. Okay, so I'm feeling feeling pretty good with that. You know, it's a little bit different, kind of offbeat. Um, but again, you know, we're this is, is going to be. Um, yeah, isn't that crazy, Carrie? Like when you add a couple of the colors, it really pops. Um, Cause just pink and white, you know, it looks nice, but it's sort of like eh, bland. And yeah, I, I don't like bland. We want to be something other than bland. All right, I definitely want a little bit more pink in here. I'm feeling feeling like we lost some of that pinkish. So I'm gonna see how this goes. Getting a little bit of it back in here. And again, you know, you can tweak yours as much as you like until you get it where you want it. Eh, that's fine. Okay, we can glitterify later. You're gonna have to let it dry. And if you're gonna do glitter, I highly recommend you get like the crystal from either Deco Art Americana or um, I think Folk Art has one. And then the Craft Smart one from Michaels is actually pretty awesome. I really, really like that one because uh, it's got these itty bitty, teeny tiny like micro bits of, of glitter. Okay, but we do wanna add some, I wanna add some snow. So this is tiny and I don't, my, my, my super skinny nail brushes haven't come yet. I'm going to test out some nail brushes and we'll decide if they, um, oh, you need purple. Ooh, Carrie, that's a good idea. Purple. So, you know, you could basically take this color and this color, the magenta E color and the teal and probably make a gorgeous purple. All right. I'm just going to sidetrack here for a minute because Carrie mentioned purple. Let's see what happens. Yeah. So you can kind of tweak it to your liking. A quinacrid on magenta will give you a better purple, but that does make a, you kind of got a something, you add some white to that and some pink. So just with that color scheme, those three colors, you can create kind of a bunch of other interesting ones. That's not bad. And so to just continue to intensify, you can add that magenta. Of course, if you really want like the really like pow purple, then your, um, your quinacrita magenta is gonna do an even better job. But yeah, there's some purple. Where, where would you put the purple carry? Should we get it in the shades here, kind of in the, oh, that's a mooky. I don't like that purple. That's not quite right, it's too mooky. I wanna make a real purple. Quinna to the rescue. All right, we'll get the snow in there, I, I swear. But a toothpick is really wonderful for snow because it's so teeny tiny that you're like less likely to get in trouble. All right, so here we go. Quinacridone, teal, and let's make us some shkapow purple. A little bit more. This is like my favorite color combo, these two. Yeah. All right, well, that's an intense, 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 rich, like whiny purple. We'll add some white to kind of, yeah. It's funny, but there's just a little bit more intensity there. That's like a beautiful violet. So some dark purple. Okay. Carrie says dark purple. Well, I showed you kind of what happens. And if, when you add the white, you can kind of better see what that purple looks like. Sometimes on camera, it gets really dark. So I'll offload and we'll add some dark purple in here because Carrie asked for it or said she needed it. So I'll see if I can't get some in. I just don't want this to become such a cacophony of color that your brain is like, whoa, what just happened? In fact, you know what? I think next time we could even do like a purple base and then kind of create some of the other colors on top of it. That might be interesting. Hmm. Might have to do another one and just test it out. Thank you, Carrie. All the good ideas. All right, so adding a little bit of the dark purple in there. So there we go. Yeah, that's actually good. So that adds a little bit more, um, yeah, a little bit more shading and whatnot. And on that note, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lighten a little bit along here just to create a little, a little bit more snow drifty. It was just it was too busy. There we go, that's better. So sometimes, you know, even just doing this kind of like multi layers of paint, even though it seems like I'm changing my mind, I mean, I, I kind of am, but a lot of those other colors are sort of peeking out. Um, and sometimes it just takes a little bit of tweaking and patience so what I'm doing is I'm just adding some more white. So now those trees really stand out and we've got kind of this lighter snow drift, um, but it is still because it's, it's, I'm kind of did all those colors underneath and I'm smushing the white on top of it, which is mixed just with a pinch of pinch of pink. It's, um, 
it what's the word I'm trying to say? It, it kind of hints it. It hints at the trees. It coordinates. But yeah, I like that simplifying a little bit. And so your purple's in there. So again, keeping it kind of in smooth arches. So now that looks a little bit more like, I like it too. Thank you, Carrie. It took me a minute because I was like, man, this isn't quite where I want it. This isn't quite where I want it. But I try and keep my inner monologue like to myself and my little inner monologue insecurities to myself. It's a little bit over my 20 minutes now because, but I'm doing a lot of yap yap, right? Okay, let's get some snow and then we can call it good. So we're taking the toothpick or a tiny skewer. I bought a whole bunch of these for a paint party and oh my gosh, I just love them. And you can basically just dot your snow on in these tiny little bits. We're gonna make it look like that snow is coming down. So you're gonna just kind of dot it and you're gonna kind of group some of these little bits of, of white together. And even think of it like you're doing lines that are kind of coming down. And we might have to do like some cool like galaxy design. I've got a list of concepts that I want to do for each of like the 25 paintings. In fact, I probably have like 30 different ideas. So what I could do is have like 30 different one of these and be like, all right, these three aren't, or these five aren't going to be in circulation this year. Um, or like make it like a grab bag so that, you know, you get to choose like what color background you want, like the opposite side to create the design and then book like them over. I don't know going to play with this. I think there's a lot of ways to do it. One of the things I really love about a, um, an advent calendar is the element of surprise. Okay. So I'm going to get a little bit of the snow showing on the snow drifts as well. And if it starts to look too much like polka dots, then, you know, group a couple of, you know, clump a couple of, of, of dots together to make it seem a little less even. All right, so that's a, oh, that came out fun. Look at that. Woo, it's amazing how this stuff comes together. Carrie, you were totally dead on with that purple. Thank you. I think that is actually what made this particular design. Oh, 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 we're gonna do the top part. I'll just grab some gold. So my Decorate Americana Extreme Sheen 24 karat. Just need one tiny drop. Luckily this stuff lasts for forever as long as you just put out the tiniest amount. So, oof, it's very goopy too. We'll just get the gold kind of right across the top here. Now, if you had silver, you could do silver, but I feel like just none of the other metals do anywhere as amazing as this particular gold. So when in doubt, I'm usually looking for excuses to use the gold. And there it is. It's not bad with this, even just a single coat. So we'll pull it off its painting base and there's my backside. All right, I've got the tiniest amount of paint on the edge, but no big deal. We flip it over and we've got this guy ready to be the first ornament of December. So I hope you guys will be able to join us um, over the coming 24 more days until Christmas. I haven't decided how I'm gonna handle Christmas, if I'm gonna do it live from my sister-in-law's house or if um, I'll pre-record it and just post it for you guys. Not sure. Um, I'm gonna, as often as possible, gonna try to go live during normal hours, but if it looks like I've got a crazy schedule coming up and I'm up at two in the morning and that's all I got, well, I'll just go live at two in the morning and maybe our friends from down under or Japan will be like, hey, what's up, Wendy? Um, but again, this stuff will always be available on replay. Um, and we'll go from there. So I will see you guys at some point tomorrow for the very next ornament. And then over the weekend, I will start to build the, the thing to, to hang each of these on. And I'll probably get these little hooks and just bloop, 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 bloop. Love you guys. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. And thank you for joining.